Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to come at y'all with some straight talk about a subject that's going to make a lot of people angry on both sides of the aisle. The Second Amendment community, the anti-gun people, it's going to make people mad on both sides. But it's something we need to talk about. It's a very serious subject. You know, we hear all the time, we've got to do something about gun violence in this country. And we, in the gun community, we usually react to that very negatively when they say that because the next thing they usually say is, we got to make sure no one gets guns because that's going to solve the problem. And we all know that's total, total BS. So we get kind of defensive about that. But we do have to admit, we do need to do something about gun violence in this country or violence in general. We have been having big problems with violence in this country. Now, don't take, get me wrong. I'm not trying to say, this is the most dangerous country in the world and you're going to get in trouble. No, that's not the case at all. But we do have pockets of extreme violence and we have certain at-risk communities that are likely to be uh, victims of this violence. And as long as those people keep dying at the end of a gun barrel, people are going to keep blaming guns when the guns are not the problem. The problem is this war on drugs that we've been engaged in. That's what we need to get rid of. And like I said, people on both sides of the aisle always get mad at me when I say this, but I'm going to keep saying it because it's true. People need to let go of their religious dogma, their political dogma, etc. when it comes to drugs. Drugs are just a substance, just like guns are just a tool. And when someone misuses a gun, that's not on the gun. When someone misuses a substance, that's not on the substance, that's on the person. And there's a lot of things we could do to help prevent that from happening. But the first step we need to take, like I said, is quit demonizing drugs and stop this ridiculous, very expensive war on drugs that has done nothing but harm these at-risk populations Create an entire criminal industry, much like how prohibition created the mobs, you know, organized crime. The drug war has created the cartels, which are more dangerous than the mafia ever was. And we're seeing the results of that today. You can't even cross into Mexico as a family without being kidnapped or killed these days. And it's because of the war on drugs creating the cartels and giving them so much money and so much power. We need to stop this ridiculous moral crusade. As I was saying, uh, the drug war has done nothing but hurt people and cost tons of money and give the government more power because every time they want more men, more equipment, more whatever, they have to say, oh, well, we have to have way more police and they have to have armored vehicles for when they have to raid drug dens or when they have to fight the cartels. All the drug war is doing is empowering an oppressive government and harming the people. And we need to end it. Much like with a lot of gun laws, it was started as a political tool. It was a way to keep certain groups of people that the government didn't think should have their rights or be heard from having rights and being heard. Under Nixon, he was facing a lot of opposition from the younger generation that did not like any of his policies. And he sat down and said, hey, I can't arrest them just for disagreeing with me or for protesting. I'd like to stop these protests. Can't arrest them for protesting. But you know, something that's really popular with this younger generation, it's marijuana. If we were to go into these protests, we'd be able to catch a lot of them with marijuana and bust up the whole thing because of it. That's how the drug war really got into full swing. It was a political tool to break up opposition and jail your enemies. Just like most gun laws were created to make sure this black community that was suddenly free didn't have the rights everyone else had and didn't have the ability to defend themselves. So very similar uh, if you look at gun laws and drug laws. They do no good, period. If someone wants to misuse drugs, not only do they have every opportunity nowadays thanks to these multi-billion dollar cartels that are pushing their product on them, but they're more likely to try it because there's a financial incentive for someone on a street corner to say, hey, if you're feeling down, this will make you feel better. Or there's a financial uh, incentive for them to go to, kin or to schoolyards and to playgrounds and say, hey, kid, you want to feel something, take something that will make you feel great? There's way more incentive for that. 
because now there's huge profit in it. So this has just been a disaster from the beginning. And not to mention how much money we spend on it. It's a hundred billion dollars a year minimum, they think, that we spend on this drug war. Imagine if we spent a hundred billion dollars a year on education, mental health care, things like that that made the people better so that they didn't misuse the substance, so that they weren't downtrodden and in anguish all the time, worrying all the time if they're going to make ends meet. If they had better educations, better mental health care, better opportunities that that hundred billion dollars a year could supply to a lot of people, there wouldn't be an issue with misuse of the substance. Just like most people don't misuse guns. Most people wouldn't misuse these other things. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're only saying this because, you know, you're someone who's pro-drug. You just don't want to be hassled when you do your drugs. Anybody knows me knows I don't do drugs. You know, the, the stiffest drug I do is caffeine. The only thing I'm addicted to is, I don't know, sugar and fatty foods. Uh, I am not a drug user. I don't smoke marijuana, even though it's perfectly legal in my state. I don't even drink alcohol, period. Not even a beer. That's why I always find it really funny that people on the right, I don't even know how people on the far left think, but I always find it funny when people on the far right who supposedly believe in freedom, personal choice, individuality, will then stand there and go, if you smoke a joint, they ought to fire you and you ought to go to jail because you smoked a joint on Saturday and then went to work on Monday or just whatever you did, just the fact that you did it. And it's really ironic when they say that with a, a beer in their hand. So what I'm saying here is if we would just end this ridiculous war on drugs, we would reduce the number of children that die at the end of a gun barrel. Like I said, how they love to say that when they include 16 to 20 year old gang members killing each other over turf so that they could sell their drugs. Uh, that would really reduce the number of children that are killed by firearms every year. If you reduced violence in inner cities and at the border, that is a direct result from the drug trade, that would really help every year. If you were able to deal better with things like immigration, etc., which a lot of immigration is related to the drug trade. A lot of illegal immigrants are sent over by cartels with huge amounts of drugs. That's why they pay to send them here. Their, their trip is financed by these cartels. That would be a good thing also. And then we could put that $100 billion to better use in education and other things, mental health care, like I've said already. We've spent trillions of dollars since the 70s on this. And like I said, all it's done is grow big government and harm the people. So if you're pro-gun, I don't care if you're religious, whatever, whatever, like I said, whatever dogma has tied you to this anti-drug policy, get over it. It's ridiculous. People should have personal choice. And the government should stop propping up, you know, multi-billion dollar industry of the most violent people in the world, the drug cartels. If their business dried up tomorrow, they wouldn't be able to buy politicians. They wouldn't be able to buy local law enforcement. They wouldn't be able to fight with local law enforcement. So they would rapidly fall apart. And we here in this country would see crime rates go down. We'd see illegal immigration go down. We'd have more money to spend on positive programs. So my plea to people out there, especially on the right, especially in the gun community, is let go of the dogma. Drugs are just a substance that you can choose to put in your body or not if you're an adult. This ridiculous war on drugs is just a political tool that, like I said, has done nothing but empower a oppressive government and hurt us as individuals. And we need to let go of the bullshit ideas that make us not even want to hear this idea. Because the war on drugs has to go. It's been the worst thing for the people, period. It's actually, I think, worse than the crimes against the Second Amendment that these politicians keep perpetrating. Because at least then we have the Second Amendment to defend us, to back us up, to win in court. This war on drugs, too many people have been convinced it's the right thing to do, and it's actually the worst thing to do, and we've been seeing it for decades.
Hey everybody, Yankee here. Just want to remind everyone, if you want to support this channel and the programs that we sponsor, or you just want some official Yankee Marshall Posse merchandise, you can go over to tympistolproject.com and there is a wide selection of merchandise over there. Pick yourself out something, buy yourself something nice. Anytime you buy a t-shirt, you get two entries into this month's friend drawing. You buy any other item, you get one entry into this month's friend drawing and all profits go to the Pets and Vets Fund that we support. So go on over, get yourself some merch, help save an animal in need, and maybe win a prize. Hey everyone, Yankee here. You know, in my videos, we often cover some complicated subjects. Subjects with a lot of gray area. So if you would like to further discuss anything said in my videos, please join us in one of my live chats. Live chats are held most days at 6 p.m. Pacific time, except for Monday and Wednesday when they are at 5 p.m. Pacific. There is a clickable link to the live chats in the upper right-hand corner of this video. If you disagree with anything I've said in a video, feel free to participate in Spank the Yank. You can come on the live discussion panel and let me know face-to-face -face how I was wrong.